there was no interstate compact uh, block on his record. So basically what you've got is a young man, sir, who went in and said, what do I need to do to get my Ohio license? And was told it took all those steps, I mean, all the steps necessary. The only thing you would have asked him to do in addition is to send 300 bucks to Alabama when he doesn't live in Alabama. So that's my argument, is that's what supports the merger, is that failure to send that money in. And yes, he's cheap, but the reality is he was driving under a valid Ohio license at the time of this accident. And the Ohio BMV didn't instruct him that he had any payment to make. He actually cleared up a couple tickets that he had to get his license back in Ohio. So I, I, I understand this is a serious matter, but at the end of the day, the crimes he's been convicted of involve failing to pay 300 bucks to Alabama where he doesn't live and where Ohio told him he didn't need to pay in order to get a valid Ohio license. We'd pay it now if we could, obviously. Well, your argument is unconvincing. Um, all I remember from the trial is that in an opening statement, you made the representation that he was going to testify and tell the jury about what happened when he went into the B&V. He exercised his right not to testify. So there is no evidence on that point. And you can stand on the soapbox and talk about it forever. There is no evidence. What we have is a transcript. And a jury that thoughtfully delivered a verdict that they uh, believe was appropriate and the court accepted. And we're talking about merger. I, I so, respect your position, Your Honor. I'll, I'll accept that, sir. Under 2941.25, and also State versus Ruff and the other cases. The court finds that the uh, tampering with records, count eight, count nine, and count 10 merge. It's all the same conduct, uh, being dishonest about information in order to obtain a driver's license. So is it your intention then to merge counts nine and 10 into count eight? Yes, Your Honor. All right. So Mr. Gasper, you have constitutional protections then that prevent you from uh, serving time for the same crime twice. So the court has merged counts 9 and 10 into count 8, so you'll be sentenced on counts 6 and 8. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Okay. And I do stress that in going forward on this matter, um, it's difficult to divorce the uh, testimony and the incident in which Trooper Bella has lost his life from the uh, crimes that are uh, to be sentenced upon here, but that is what the court is doing. And I understand that uh, there is much emotion, as there should be on both sides of this issue, involving Trooper Bella's family, Mr. Gaspar's family, as well as the community. There have been letters in support uh, of each side that the court has received. But I'm only sentencing on the misdemeanor offenses for which he was convicted, and that's count six and count eight. Mr. Sen, you also have a motion for partial bond assignment that's pending. Correct, Your Honor. Do you have any objection to the request? The request was to release some of the uh, posted bond money to be utilized as legal fees. We do object. On what basis? It was filed July 21st. I haven't gotten anything in writing prior to this. I don't know that we were served with that. It was electronically filed. Well, in any event, uh, there is a signed bond assignment from the defendant authorizing that $25,000 of his bond money be assigned to the attorney's sin. What would the basis of your objection be? Because uh, there could be a fine no greater than $2,000 in this matter. I'll withdraw the objection, Judge. So the motion for partial bond assignment is granted. Thank you, Your Honor. If there are any fines, fees, they come first before any assignment. Understood, sir. So Mr. Gaspar, as far as the sentencing procedure, your attorney is going to speak on your behalf. You may speak if you wish. Uh, Mr. Thomas or others could speak, and then the court will announce your sentence in this matter. And I am permitting the victim advocate uh, to, to read a couple letters into the record. Uh, I feel they are 
permitted under the sentencing statute, the misdemeanor sentencing statutes. Although again, I am sentencing you for count six and count eight, not for the counts for which you were acquitted. That being said, Mr. Sen, what would you like to say on behalf of your client? You know, thank you on behalf of Josh. I appreciate the court's position today, and I appreciate you stating as you just did that you're only going to sentence Josh for the conduct with which he was convicted. This was a tragic, tragic accident. Uh, we've said that from the beginning, and we continue to say that. Ultimately, the jury found that Josh was not criminally responsible in any way for the accident that caused Trooper Velez's death. So while I do appreciate that, his, that the trooper's family's here and his co-workers are here, and they have a lot of um, pain and a lot of information they'd like to put before the court for sentencing, the reality is the jury found that my client is not criminally liable for the death of Trooper Velez. So in, in a courtroom setting, in a criminal sentencing setting, it would not be appropriate to have uh, those folks get up and speak as victims. Uh, this was an accident, and we do accept that. But we also accept that tensions are high here, Your Honor. You've made a decision to allow some reading of, of things in the record, and we will not object to that. We'll find that to be appropriate, sir. As far as the conduct for which you're going to sentence Josh for, Your Honor, I would just ask that you treat Josh as you would any other offender. He spent six months in the county jail. Um, ultimately, you have another six months that you are permitted to give him pursuant to your decision on the merger issue, sir. I know that you tend to put folks in jail uh, at times for, for, for misdemeanors. You're, you're not shy about doing that if you feel it's appropriate. I would tell you that Josh has had six months to sit there and listen to what he did and to make and to consider what he did. And I read the pre-sentence investigation and what you've got is a young man who takes responsibility for his actions. In this case, he took some shortcuts. The shortcuts he took were with the Ohio Bureau of Motor Vehicles. The shortcuts he took were not being as candid, candid as he could have been or should have been in getting his Ohio license. I think it's important to note, as I stated earlier, Your Honor, he was able to get an Ohio license. He did have one. <coughs> And had he paid the $300, there would have not been a problem with that. He was not required to retest as the statute required. He was not required to do anything except pay money. He didn't do that. And, and, and you're right, Your Honor. I think the fact that my client uh, took the shortcut was cheap. It's cost him dearly at this point. It's cost him six months of his life and it has potential cost for another six months of his life. What we're asking, Your Honor, is that you look to the PSI, look to my client's acceptance of responsibility and treat this as you would any other driving under suspension case, any other misdemeanor falsification case, and, 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 and use the resources available to you. Judge, I'm asking you not sentence him to more time in jail. I'm asking that you release Josh. I'm asking that if you choose to put him on probation, you do so. I'm asking that you give him an opportunity to go out there and, and, and earn a living. You know, just because my client's not criminally liable for this accident, Your Honor, doesn't mean there's not civil liability. I'm not agreeing or disagreeing to that. I don't do civil work, but there's a civil lawsuit that's been filed by the trooper's family. Obviously, if Josh is working, he's in a much better situation to pay restitution should a civil court later on determine that he had some type of culpability. Uh, he's learned his lesson. You're never going to see him back here, Your Honor. He was actually a pretty clean living kid uh, the day this happened. He was on the right track. He's a spiritual young man. He's got a great family. All these folks are here to support him. I think you've noted that during the entire month-long trial, we had a packed courtroom full of folks from both families. Uh, Josh has that support. He's, he was out on bond for a while. While on bond, he didn't violate any of your conditions. He wore a GPS bracelet. Uh, and he, he complied with all your terms. There wasn't one problem, Your Honor. So clearly, he's capable of following court orders. You know, what I'm asking you today, sir, is give him an opportunity. Give him an opportunity on probation. Give him an opportunity to get out of jail. Um, I'm asking you not to sentence him to the maximum amount of time available, but instead to release him with credit for time served. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Mr. Kessler, is there anything that you would like to say uh, with respect to the sentencing? Um, to be totally honest, I, I did not know. You know, I went into the BMV. Um, I asked them <clears throat> what I needed to do. They told me what I was required to do. Um, the BMV was packed. They said, sign here, sign here. I did that and had no idea until all this happened. Thank you. Um, I reinstated my license, I guess, May 23rd. 
and uh, the suspension was up to 20. Anything you want to say with respect to how the judge is going to view it sentencing? I just ask that you'd uh, be lenient. Thank you. Thomas. Thank you, Judge. I would first ask the court to hear from uh, the victim advocate, Ms. Peo Ayala, um, who has been permitted to read the two letters from the family. And then I would uh, reserve time for comments by the state. Um, this letter is from Andrea Velez, um, a daughter of uh, Kenneth Velez. I've been avoiding coming to hearings because I didn't want to see the man who took my father's life in person. I didn't want to associate the face with the name. I didn't want to look up and see the monstrous person everyone made, out to be, made you out to be. But sitting here now, I look up and I don't see a monster. monster. I see a human being that made a mistake, a careless mistake that took my hero's life. Yes, but all humans make mistakes. I sure have not lived a perfect life in a utopia where I've never done anything wrong. I've made mistakes. However, my mistakes are one of the things that mold the person that I am today. This is because I take my mistakes and I turn them into life lessons, lessons to avoid bigger mistakes. So Mr. Gaspar, you made a mistake, a mistake that I do not wish ill and, and the worst penalties upon you for. But what I do wish is that, like me, you take your mistake and learn from it. This is a big mistake, but use it to clean yourself, yourself up now. No more drugs, no more disobeying the law. If there's a police officer or anyone in general on the side of the road, switch lanes. Laws are set for a reason. Learn from your mistakes. Make good of a horrible situation. Go help others who are struggling with the problems you face. Show them it's not worth it. You may have took my father's life, but this gives the, you the opportunity to save yourself and others. So when I'm asked what penalty I wish you, wish you to receive, my answer is to base on what I believe the exact amount of time you should receive is. It is based on the amount of time it takes you to learn from your mistakes and change for the better. And not just say, say it, but actually mean it and prove it. And to make it last, not go back to your old ways. Not only am I, my brothers, my mother, the rest of the family, and many more friends are struggling, but I know your family must be, must be too. I'm sure they struggle watching you take the wrong paths in life and struggle watching you now. So not only be the change you need for you to possibly save others, but also for your family. My father and my mother instill core values into my, their children that they have helped me to take the right path and live the life to the fullest. One being to never hold grudges and hate in your heart. If I hated you, my dad isn't coming back. If you got the worst punishment, my dad isn't coming back. If I were to live my life with this hatred in my heart, I would be unhappy for the rest of my life. And my dad would be so upset if I didn't live life to the fullest and become the daughter he's always been proud of. So I leave you with this, Mr. Gaspar. I forgive you. I just pray you find the help you need, learn from your mistakes, and pay it forward by helping others. Show that my dad's life mattered. Andrea Velez. And this letter is from Ana Velez, Kenneth Velez's mother. Uh, my son died September 15, 2016 because of the negligence and irresponsible conduct of Joshua Gaspar. My son was doing his job. He was not in the wrong. Mr. Gaspar was speeding, was impaired, and was illegally driving without a valid driver's license. My son's lives mattered. It is my feeling that Mr. Gaspar got away with killing my son. Justice was not served. Now this guy will be back on the street to possibly kill someone else's son, daughter, grandchild, parent, grandparent, father, mother. He is a danger to anyone on the road. Gaspar showed no remorse. He didn't even care that my son laid on the road bleeding because of his actions. Nothing will ever make that it hurt in my heart go away. 
Gaspar did everything wrong and gets to walk around enjoying his life while my son, who was not doing anything wrong, is buried in the ground. It hurt me when Gaspar went to social media saying it was just a bad accident, as he was just enjoying a Cavs game and hanging out with friends. Yet my son is buried. My grandchildren lost their father. They did not deserve that. No sentence you give Gaspar will calm my heart. He needs to go away as long as possible to protect the innocent people on the roadways. My son's life matters, but justice let us down. I will never get over this tragedy because of Gaspar's actions. He needs to pay for his actions. Imagine having breakfast with your son today, hearing his voice at lunchtime when he calls you to check up on you, and you never hear, never hearing his voice again. And then imagine seeing him in the condition my son was in because of Gaf Gaspar's actions. I could never see him again, hear him again, touch him again. It is overwhelming. Not a day passes that my husband and I don't cry for our son. We miss him in our lives. He has two months away from he was two months away from retiring, and he had a lot of plans for his future. Now all of that is shattered because of Gaspar. Please do not let us down like the jury let us down. They devalued my son by not finding Gaspar guilty of killing my son. Killing my son. He killed my son. Please send him away for as long as possible. Trooper Velez, my dear son, his life mattered. Do what's right, please. Anna Velez. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Judge. Um, in reviewing the prior criminal history of Mr. Gaspar, uh, it should be noted for the record that the Alabama suspension originated from the crime of drug distribution. Not drug abuse, drug distribution. Uh, in addition, he was on probation at the time of these offenses. We would ask that the court impose the 12 months that you have determined is available after merger. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Gaspar, anything in the bottom? There you go. Right, Mr. Gaspar, in sentencing you and all others to come before the court on misdemeanors, I'm required to comply with misdemeanor sentencing statutes. They'll start at 2929.21. The overall and overriding purpose is to protect the public from future crime by the offender and others, and to punish the offender. And in doing so, the court shall consider the impact of the offense, the need for changing the offender's behavior, making restitution to the public. And that's what I'm dealing with here, two uh, instances of public misconduct at the BMV. Uh, and then that led to uh, ultimately to someone's death, but that is outside of the scope of our sentencing today. The court has to come up with a sentence that is commensurate with and not the meaning to the seriousness of your conduct and a sentence that's consistent with sentences imposed for similar offenses committed by similar offenders. We don't often have driving under suspension cases here, as are more common in uni court, but we do have mis misdemeanor offenses, and I uh, am sentencing you consistent with what others have received in uh, somewhat similar circumstances. So in fashioning the sentence here, the court under 2929.22 must consider the nature and circumstances of the offense. So in this case, there was dishonesty, uh, and that allowed you to obtain a license. Had you answered the questions truthfully, you would not have obtained a license. And that was very clear from the person from the BMV that spoke, and I know that you have stated here uh, a different circumstance than what was testified to at trial, but I'm accepting what was testified to at trial. I also know that you have a prior crime of dishonesty before this, so I'm somewhat skeptical of, of anything you might say. Uh, that's unfortunate, but you have to prove yourself to be an honorable person going forward. People are not going to accept you at face value based upon your conduct in the past. That's, that's just life. The court must consider <coughs> whether you have a history of persistent criminal activity and what the risk is that you'll commit another offense. So I'm looking back here. You have 
So offenses involving, I guess, when you were doing some building and you didn't have proper permits and that was in Parmer. And that's really minor compared to the, some of the things that followed. We did have a uh, drug possession case back here in 2008. And you had a theft case here in 2009. You had the offense in uh, Alabama that led to the supervision that was conducted up in Ohio. So you were on supervision, you have prior convictions, and you have violations of sanctions set for you in the past by Judge Corrigan back in 2008. Um, there are some positive things to be said for you in sentencing. You did well otherwise on uh, your supervision and court supervised release until this particular event. You work, you have strong family support. Uh, it is probably as difficult for them to be here uh, in some ways as it is for the Velez family, except that the Velez family will never be feel complete again. But you know, your family has now been subject to your misdeeds. Court notes you have served prison time in the past. That's something to consider here as to whether you uh, should receive a harsher sentence or an easier one. Also consideration is, uh, are you committing the worst form of the offense? Do you just, have you responded to prior sanctions? Do they demonstrate that the longest jail term is necessary to deter you from committing a future, future crime? In this instance, your attorney has asked for a sentence of supervision, but you were on supervision at the time when all this uh, started. So considering everything together here, Court's imposing a sentence of 12 months in the county jail. That's six months on count six, the driving under suspension. Six months on count eight, tampering with records. Those will be served consecutively. I think that's appropriate in this instance. So I said, you have prior crime of dishonesty, and then an additional dishonesty here. Um, carelessness arising from this initial event in February led to the death of someone in September, you shouldn't have gone on the road. Whether it's a matter of paying $300 or not, as a citizen here in Ohio, I expect that everybody on the road will have a valid license, insurance, and drive responsibly. Responsibly, and you didn't. You didn't do that. Um, so if it was only a matter of paying $300, I would suggest that you're uh, somewhat careless about your approach to life, that carelessness ultimately ended up in someone dying. You could do better. And Trooper Velez's daughter was very gracious in saying that uh, she would pray for you and she would hope that you could do better. And uh, you've expressed that in your PSI, that you have uh, dreams and aspirations. Keep in mind, you're not living for one person anymore. You're living for the memory of someone that was held in high esteem by all of his colleagues, and everybody in the community. So it's not just you. You have to live up to the standard that's a high standard that someone else before you set. So really, in this case, uh, sitting here and listening to all the testimony, watching the uh, horrific events uh, that resulted in Trooper Velez's death, uh, really, this case was just about sadness. You have placed yourself in a situation where harm could come to someone else, and it did. And uh, I know that the, the jury and anyone else that came into, into this room could feel that there was just a sense of loss in many ways for many different individuals, but certainly the family of uh, Trooper Velez, uh, who was well-loved and respected. But sad is too that you would be in this position, that anybody should be careless and cause the death of another person from our community. Uh, and I don't think that the sense of sadness will go away for anyone anytime soon. So it's, uh, it's a, it was a difficult trial. It was difficult to see the video and to hear the testimony and to know that a good person uh, is not with us. But as the Trooper's daughter pointed out, you have the opportunity to make something of yourself and that is the least you can do in this circumstance. So I appreciate uh, what everyone has been through, the families on both sides, uh, the troopers that have lost their colleague, 
And uh, again, it was a very uh, sad time to have to be present and witness the loss of someone, as well as um, knowing that your liberty is lost. So anyway, Mr. Gessler, um, will serve the 12 months in county jail, imposing a $1,000 fine on count one of driving under suspension. You pay court costs, you do work, you have the ability to work in the future. If you don't pay the court costs, you may be required to do court community work service in the future to satisfy the court costs. Is that clear? Yes, Your Honor. Credit for time served is 175 days. For count six, I'm imposing a one year class seven driver's license suspension and also reporting two points to the DMV for this matter, for count six. And we have the right of appeal. Judgment, we approach. Your class seven suspension and two points to the BNP. Mr. Gaspard, under criminal rule 32, you have the right to appeal. If you're unable to obtain counsel for an appeal, counsel will be appointed without cost. If you're unable to pay the cost of the documents necessary for an appeal, documents will be provided without cost. And you have the right to have a notice of appeal timely filed 